This is another episode in the ongoing master class for the management and treatment of clinically significant vitreous opacities, otherwise known as eye floaters. I'm Dr. James Johnson, also known as the Floater Doctor, and I've been treating floaters exclusively since 2007. Today, I'm going to discuss the two immutable laws of eye floater evaluation. Let's get started. The first law is floaters don't have to be physically large to be bothersome. They don't have to be big to be bothersome. They just have to bother you or they have to bother the patient. This is particularly true with the younger patients. If you've had somebody come into your office in their 20s and 30s particularly and they're complaining bitterly about their floaters and you do the usual like, well, we have to rule out retinal disease, retinal tear, hole, detachment, whatever, as we usually do. You'll dilate and you'll get in there and you'll look and very quickly you can look around and look around 360 degrees and reassure yourself and convey that reassurance to the patient that there is no retinal involvement. Now, regarding the floaters, some of the floaters in younger patients are very difficult to see. They can be truly microscopic and they can be just right up against the retina, microscopic. The way I explain the, the, the difficulty and the challenge uh, oftentimes to my patients, I say, it's like if we had some little strands of fiberglass or strands of fiber optic fibers, you know, thin, transparent, and you dropped them into a swimming pool at night, and I gave you a flashlight and I said, go find those things. You know, they've settled down to the bottom, they're translucent, transparent, against a low contrast background, you're shining a light in there, you're getting some reflections off the surface of the water and some of the imperfections and impurities of the water. If you get lucky, you might catch a little reflection off those, those, those fiberglass strands or fiber optic strands. It's just not an ideal situation for for, for locating them, right? And similarly with the eye, we're looking in the back there, these things are microscopic. And yet, if you, you know, in my case, I have my patients fill out a, a registration paperwork and at the bottom of the second page here, I have these two rectangles and these are basically draw a picture of what these things look like to you, you know, as you look out into the world. So look against a big bright white wall or backlit computer screen or something like that and they'll draw them. The younger patients will often draw these really as if they were drawn by an engineer or a microscopist. These very fine detailed little translucent double double walled little strands like yeast hyphae, ca candida yeast or something might look under a microscope. I used to call them crystal worms. Crystal worms, that's what they look like. They're microscopic. They're little bundles of collagen that have clumped together. Very difficult to see clinically. In fact, if you can't find these things on examination, don't feel bad. For years, decades, I've been looking for these things and sometimes I just have to shrug my shoulders and say, dude, I know they're there, I just can't find them. The optics and the resolution of the instruments that we have to examine that part of the eye are just not, it's, that's not what these, these lenses and these optics are built for. It's really not good for these types of things. So if they have moving shadows, moving strands, and they draw something like that, and, and you can't find them, don't feel bad. They are probably sub-resolution, sub-clinical, but they're a real thing. Now, interestingly enough, also I asked them on the bothersomeness scale, in other words, on the scale of zero to 10, as far as how much they bother you, not how you compare to somebody else, but basically how your left eye compares to your right eye, how does it bother you? Very often these younger patients will say, oh, it's a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10, it's an 11 out of 10. These patients are anxious, depressed, despondent, nearly suicidal over these little clumps of collagen that are almost impossible to see on examination. But don't discount that. You know, floaters don't have to be big to be bothersome, they just have to bother you. So that's rule number one. Rule number two is floaters are something that the patient sees and is bothered by. Something that the patient sees but the doctors either don't see or don't fully appreciate. That is basically tied to what I just said before. So just because you're not super impressed by the physical amount of degeneration and disorganization in the vitreous doesn't mean that that patient isn't suffering their floaters. So this is where we have to just dial up our empathy and just say, I get it, that must suck, I either have something to offer for you or I don't. 
these younger patients, by the way, and this is the real, the real dilemma, is these younger patients who suffer so much, usually they're not going to be a candidate for laser treatment because their floaters are so close to the retina. And so I, I, I'll, in another video, I'll talk about what some options or an option that might be available for them that has been very successful in my practice. So just keep in mind that floaters don't have to be big to be bothersome. They just have to bother the patient. And the second law is there's something that the patient can be quite distressed with. You may not see it, may not fully appreciate it. But again, with empathy and with understanding and actually listening to the patient, and not gaslighting them and telling them that their experience is not their experience. Just be mindful that that's the case for them. So anyways, I hope that helps put in perspective this sort of disconnect between what the patient experiences and what we experience on examination. It's just not super obvious sometimes. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed a little something from this. And if you're interested in more content, please subscribe and hit the notifications bell so that you'll be notified when I put more content out. Let's make this collaborative. If you're a physician and you've been treating floaters and you have some comments on this particular topic or, and wish to add to that conversation or something else that you've learned or you have requests to, for me to do a video on a particular topic, by all means, comment in the comment section. And if you're just starting out in treating floaters, I hope this is really valuable to you. And uh, let's make this collaborative. Let's make this, this better for everybody. Good for you. Good for them. Good for humanity. Anyways, thank you for watching.